This is a really silly film. Deep in the swirling depths of outer space lies a star. In the black vastness of space, a star burns bright, illuminating the planets in its orbit. Some of them are frozen masses of ice, featuring red spots and halos of circles. Still others are boiling hot. But there is one green planet in this solar system that supports life as we know it. Parts of this planet are foggy and rainy. And other parts are covered with ice and snow in the winter time. But there is one part of this fair green planet where the sun shines all the time. And that is where we are taking you today. This part is called California, a jewel at the edge of the Pacific Ocean. California lies at the west of the United States. The climate of the West is mostly dry and arid in summer, but in California the influence of the ocean moderates the climate. The state of California is dominated by the great chain of mountains, the Sierra Nevada, rising to almost 13,000 feet. In the center of California lies the Central Valley, a rich agricultural farmland, and on the coast lie the metropolises of Los Angeles in the south and San Francisco in the north. The San Francisco Bay Area is characterized by the central bay with its communities all around the waterfronts and the ridges of mountains running southeast to northwest that represent the fault lines of seismic activity as the continental plates slip over each other. We live in Berkeley just across the bay from San Francisco, backed up against the Berkeley Hills, and this is our home. Hello. I don't know who that guy was with the funny voice on the introduction, but as soon as I finish my breakfast, I'll give you a tour of the house and where we live, introduce you to our family, to Christopher and Cindy, where we work, and where my parents live on the coast. See you soon. This is our house at 1829 Francisco Street. Up the street, in the hills, are the offices of the University Research Laboratory where I work in the afternoons. It only takes me about five minutes to get to work. Down the street, you can see the San Francisco Bay.
Hi, Tiffa. Come in. Thanks. We will. Let's come into our house. Did you take a picture of me? Yes, I did. You're on the camera right now. Let's go inside and we'll show them our front room, okay? Come on. Let's come in the house. Yeah. You go over, over there. This is the front room of our house. And this is Tiffa. Tiffa's five and a half. He's a big guy, aren't you? We've got all kinds of funny, old, comfortable stuff in our house, but we like it that way. And over here is the kitchen, and it's full of all kinds of funny, comfortable old stuff, too. Including my cuckoo clock, which has been ticking ever since I was born. What do you think of that, Tiffa? Yeah. Okay. You want to say bye to the people? This is the hall in the houseway. We've got books everywhere, bookshelves everywhere. This is our funny old bathroom with, uh, oh, there's the parrot. <clears throat> yep, more bookshelves everywhere you look. Books on every available surface. As we continue through towards the back of the house, this is our bedroom. And these are the back doors that lead out to the garden. We like to spend a lot of time in our garden. When the weather is fine in the summer, we sit out here for breakfast and we sit out here for our evening meals too. Over there in the far corner is the bamboo. We planted it a couple of years ago and it's growing so enormous now, we don't know what to do. The pond is something we made a couple of years ago too. The soothing sound of the water. And this building here is a building that Cindy and I built in 1986 through 1988, and I now use it as my office and workshop for the business called McGee Scientific, where we make the scientific instrument that measures air pollution. Let's see if we can find Tiffa. He must be hiding in the garden somewhere. There he is. Tiffa, what you doing? You hiding? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I bet I'm going to step on something if I'm not looking where I'm going. Are there any cats over by the hammock? What do you think? Are there any cats over by the hammock? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. I'm going to show some nice pictures of the flowers. Let's go look at the giant bamboo which is causing me so much worry. Tiff, uh, those are not nice faces. There's our raspberry patch. In the summer and the autumn, we get nice crops of raspberries. And these, reaching up to the sky, is a problem yet to come when the bamboo all comes shooting up through the lawn. But the hanging chair there is really fun to sit in. See how tall it is, Tiff? Can you make it? Wow, look at that. We'll look around the garden just a little bit more, back towards the house. And that's the back of our house. The roof needs fixing, and it'll get fixed sometime, not sure when. And that's the back of our building, and that's where Cindy has her art studio. Well, let's go back indoors and see if we can find Cindy. Well, that last scene was rather strange, and the camera work wasn't that good either. But when I'm all cleaned up, I'll introduce you to the rest of the family. See you in a minute. Hello. We look forward to seeing you later in this film.
Ooh, raspberries. I love raspberries. Hi, I hope you're enjoying our film of California. As you can see, life here is fraught with difficulties. It's hard to relax so much, but we really enjoy it. Hi. Tony will take you on to see a few more things. Bye-bye for now. Now we're getting ready to go to school. We're going to walk up the street to Tipper's school. And as we walk up the street, we'll look around and then we'll show you his school when we get there. Tipper, time to put your shoes on. Come on, Tip. We've got to get ready. Time to go to school. Tiffa has just run all the way up the next block towards his school. Way up there on the hills is the Lawrence Berkeley lab where I work and I'll take you there soon. Over there on the corner is Halcia's bed and breakfast guest house. It's just one block away from our house. We often have people stay there when they come to visit us. We hope that you can too. Now we'll continue back on up the block towards Tiffa's school. Where did that little guy go? He must have gone in the schoolyard. We'll see if we can find them in there. schoolroom. Let's go in and see if we can find his class. Well, we shouldn't disturb his class. Tiffa really enjoys his school. He has lots of friends to play with, and it's so convenient because our house is just two blocks down the street. The hardest part is getting him up in the morning. He never wants to get out of bed, but it's always nice to know that we can just walk right up here, and here's his school. Now we'll go back home, and then we'll go up to my work at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab up in the hills. As you can tell, we live in a residential neighborhood with mostly older homes and buildings, many of them dating from 80, 90, 100 years ago. And it's really pretty quiet in terms of traffic and not too much many people. Those funny noises over there somewhere are peacocks. There's actually a flock of wild peacocks that live in the trees. I don't think we'll see them today though. We'll go back home now and then I'll hack and, hack and have another cup of tea. Here's Halcia's guest house, bed and breakfast again. It was built just about a hundred years ago by a sea captain who had it as his mansion. And since then it's been converted into a really nice place to stay. Many of the houses in the neighborhood have really nice gardens. People enjoy gardening around here. And of course, the climate is really pretty good for it, too.
bum bum di dum bum di bum di bum di bum 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 if I don't get run over by any cars, biggest problem is actually tripping on things when I'm walking along with the camera. And here we are at the main street, Martin Luther King. Wait for a pause in the traffic, and we can cross. And soon we'll be back home. And here we are, back home again. This is not our cat. His name is Ty. He lives next door, but he loves to come over and eat out of our cat food bowl. Hi, Ty. Want to say hi for the camera? No. Before going up to the lab, I'll just show you around uh, my little office where I run our private business, McGee Scientific Company, where we make the instrument for measuring air pollution. I'm just set up in this little comfortable building and right here, this is my center of operations. About 15 years ago, up at the university lab, I invented a method for measuring smoke as an air pollutant, like diesel smoke or uh, smoke from burning coal or oil. And we turned that into a scientific instrument that could make that measurement. And then it turned out not only was it a useful laboratory instrument, but it's being used in Europe for monitoring pollution in cities, primarily because of all of the diesel vehicles there. So over the years, I've built up a small business where in the old days we used to actually make the instrument here, but now the instrument is being made in Europe and I have to take care of all of the organization and paperwork from this end. Right over here at my workbench was where, years ago, we used to physically stay up all night and make the instruments one by one. And every single instrument, even the ones in very remote and far away places, were all made right here. Cut. This map here shows where all of the instruments are located, ones that we made here, right here in Berkeley, and now they're just starting production in Europe. But instruments have been up way up in the Alaskan Arctic, in Greenland, in the Russian Arctic, uh, in remote places in the oceans, in the tropics, uh, in Antarctica, and even at the South Pole. And I'm hoping that next year I will actually get to go to the South Pole to install one of the later, the newer models of instrument. But this is where we've actually made hardware and it's out there measuring air pollution in all of those places. If I ever get to be rich and have enough time and energy, I'd love to go visit each one of these little places, each one of these pins on the map. I, I'm going up to work now on my scooter. I can't take the camera with me and shoot it while I'm riding along, but I'll stop from time to time on the way up to the Lawrence Berkeley lab. A scooter is really convenient here in Berkeley with such nice weather. It's a great way to get around. I just came from down there. This is Hearst Street, Oscar's Hamburgers. And if we go up Hearst, then the Lawrence Berkeley lab is in the hills in the background and the campus of the university is coming up soon in a large area on the right-hand side. This is one of the entrances to the campus of the university. Things are pretty quiet right now. The students have just finished their summer examinations and are heading home for their vacations. But we'll continue on up the hill to the Lawrence lab. This is the road going up the hill towards the lab. Way up there on the top of the hill, you can see one of the lab buildings. We have a really fantastic view from up there, as you'll see. And that wooden structure there is one of the new student residences. Pretty nice. 
The laboratory is named after Ernest Orlando Lawrence, who invented the cyclotron in about 1938. And that invention of the cyclotron led to an enormous uh, explosion in the field of physics, high energy physics, nuclear physics, and everything else. Apart from being a smart guy in physics, Lawrence also knew where to locate a laboratory up on a hilltop with a beautiful view all across the Bay Area. Down there in the background, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge. The campus of the university is down there. We'll continue back on up to my office, and then I'll show you my lab and some of the people I work with. About 3,000 people work here at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab in all areas of science and engineering. In the old days, it was mostly concerned with high energy physics and nuclear physics, but nowadays there's work in all kinds of areas of engineering, biotechnology, and etc. And of course, today, the day that I choose to show you around the lab, they're also doing some kind of tree trimming to cut down the eucalyptus trees. But look at this for a view from our parking lot. And in the top floor of that building is the director's office. And you can be sure he's got a pretty fancy suite of offices with a view like that over the Golden Gate Bridge. Right now, of course, today, we've got a giant crane parked right outside our building, but there's always some kind of construction or activity going on here. The place is in constant construction, new buildings, new programs. This is my office building, and my offices are on a lower floor. When these trees are cut down, we'll have a better view also. quieter inside the building. I'll just come in and introduce you to our group leader, Dr. Joe Jaklovic. Our group has almost 30 people in it. Hi, Joe. Hi. My office and our engineering labs are one floor down from the main level. Uh, some of the people are lucky enough to have windows. Uh, my office doesn't have a window, but it's actually pretty comfortable, and uh, I have it set up nicely just the way that I want it. See, Bill's got a window. Jack's office has got a window, but this little cubicle, home from home, is where I spend my afternoons and get my work done designing engineering and trying to come up with new gadgets for biotechnology and automation. Across the hall is the engineering lab where we actually make the things that we design at our desks. We're making robotics and automation for the Human Genome Project, which is a big biotechnology research project. This is one of the machines we've been working on recently for dispensing liquids in small volumes and mixing together biological reagents. And of course, we have lots of facilities. We have workshops, assembly areas, test areas, everything that we need to do our job. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy working with the guys here. Right down the hall from the lab, we're very lucky to have a machine shop where the technicians can make anything that we design on paper. Let's see if I can get Arnold's attention. Hi, Arnold. How are you? Busy making something? That's great. Thanks, Arnold. Well, here we are outside my building again. The tree trimming people have departed for the day. They're certainly clearing the trees, which will improve our view. That's the view out there straight towards the Golden Gate. And our house is actually just right down there somewhere, not too far away. I've never quite been able to pick it out, but it's right down there in Berkeley. And so you can see how close it is that I have. It only takes me five minutes to get to work. And this is the view that I get from the parking lot when I come to work every day. I'll take you up to another part of the lab and show you a little bit more of the overall complex of buildings here. The domed building there is where the original cyclotron was housed. I need to have a scooter because I can travel around from one building to another. Because the site is built on the side of a hill, there's very little parking, and it's always a problem to find a place to park a car.
That's the city of Oakland in the background with the Oakland docks and the Oakland airport. And in the foreground here is the campus of the university in Berkeley up against the Berkeley Hills and the recreation areas and other facilities that they have here in the hills. And the We even have our own fire and rescue department here and they have special training for dealing with chemical spills and so forth. This is something that Christopher loves. And right down here is a better view of the central campus of the university. The tall tower there is the famous Campanile, the Sather Bell Tower. And that street in the background there is the main street of Berkeley, University Avenue, which leads from the campus down towards the freeway. And there in the background is the city of San Francisco. The bridge going across to the city is the Oakland Bay Bridge. And in the background, the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, that's enough for me showing you around the lab. I've got to go back to work now, but next we'll take you on a trip down to Aptos. See you soon. We're on our way down to Aptos to see my parents, and so we're going to take you down the California coast. Well, we're on our way down the coast. It's going to be a lovely day. We'll see you for a nice trip down the coast.
are finally at my folks' house. Oh, hello. Oh, it's lovely to see you again. Hello. Long journey. We really need to relax, don't we? With a glass of wine and a little uh, cracker and uh, a little artichoke dip. My folks live in Ap. My folks' house is in Aptos, just south of Santa Cruz. Just there between those two houses, you can see the ocean. It only takes them a few minutes to walk down to the ocean. They bought this house about 15 years ago in the early 1980s, and we come down here two or three times a month at the weekends when we can. It only takes us an hour and a half or two hours to get here. Let's go indoors and just say hi and look around in their house. This is the dining room and the kitchen. Hello, Mum. How are you? Well, I'm just preparing the evening meal. Oh, are that's... you going around the house? Yes, we're just going to show them around. Well, you know, this is a ranch house. It was built uh, in three different parts. This bit and then another piece was added. And then finally, the third piece with the apartment above was added. Oh, well, I'll just show people around and then we'll see what we can see. OK. We go out here back to the back. And the yeah. garden is where we like to spend a lot of time. Hello, everyone, again. Hello. What are we doing here? We've got berries and a picnic table and a nice yard. Whoop. And now we'll go back inside and see where we live. This is their front room. My mother loves to play the violin. My dad plays the piano. She also plays in a local orchestra. And then upstairs, there's an apartment where guests can stay. Oh, look at that. That's me and the camera. Hi. And we hope that if you come down here to see us, that this is where you'll stay when you come and visit us. We'll go back downstairs now and see what else is. This is a really silly film. Showing on the map. Uh, the route they took, which you've just seen on the video. Now, they started at Berkeley, and they come across the Bay Bridge through San Francisco to the coast, all the way down the coast to Santa Cruz, where we live. Actually, we live just a few miles south here on Monterey Bay, this enormous bay. And now today, we're going back up the coast to their cabin, and about this point, we drive inland into the woods and up into the hills. And their cabin is six miles inland, just about where that green area is. On. We've rented a truck because we have to go to a lumber yard and get a whole bunch of lumber to take up to the cabin. So we'll see you up there. OK. is up in the hills to the right of the road. I'll get a picture of it. Way up there, yeah. about six miles up.
This is the road that leads up to our cabin. It's paved here, but when it gets further up into the mountains, we've got about six miles of dirt road, and our cabin is somewhere way, way, way up there in the redwoods. So we'll be going up there then, and we'll show you our cabin when we get there. with the waterfall. Oh, not much water today. No, not much water today. Did you take a picture? Up here in the mountains, there's a small community of people that live up here in a few shacks and houses. Some of them live here year round. Come up here just at the weekends or for holidays, which is what we intend to do with our cabin. Here's a, here's a junction in the road, and if you can believe it, we're going up this smaller turning, and the road actually gets quite a bit worse and quite a bit steeper, so hang on. We'll show you around. Our cabin is in the redwoods, about 900 feet above sea level and six miles up the dirt road from the coast. <coughs> this whole area, the trees were, lumb were cut down about a hundred years ago, and so the trees that we see now are based on the stumps of the old trees plus whatever has grown in the last hundred years. The cabin is not very fancy, but we're gradually trying to fix it up. A couple of small outbuildings along with the cabin, and one of them we turned into a, like a little, special little tiny cabin for Tiffer with his own drawbridge. The main cabin is still in need of a lot of work inside, but one of the things that we have done in the last few months is to build a nice deck on the outside of the cabin. Oh, we've already got our first resident. Good morning, sir. Come into the, come into the garden. <laughs> and the deck looks over the canyon. In the rainy season, the canyon is full of water, tinkling and rushing flowing down, down, down. Look at the size of that huge redwood stump down there. That was a tree that the loggers cut down and it must have fallen down and they couldn't recover it. But this is the kind of view that we have from up here in our cabin and we hope that you'll be able to come and see us up here sometime. The property goes way down there way down the canyon. We've actually got about six acres here, but of course it's just woodland, so it really doesn't matter, but there are plenty of places for Christopher to explore and look around as he gets to be a little bit bigger, he'll have lots of fun here. This is his official lookout stump. 
you climb up to the top of it, you can see everything in the kingdom. And back up there is the cabin. Can we see from the top of the lookout stump? Christopher and his grandmother are somewhere way, way, way down there looking for gold or things to find. Oh, construction always seems to involve such a lot of loading and unloading. Well, you can take a break now, honey, and come and have some lunch. Come and visit us here in the cabin in the Redwoods. We'd love to have you come and stay with us. Hope to see you soon. To the beach. The beach is only a couple of minutes away. Putting sun cream on. The sun's Let's go see what they found. They're digging for something in the ocean. That's the pier down there. I hope you've enjoyed the tour, and I hope you'll come and see us real soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Oh, see you soon. Oh.